My Outdoor TV is your home for every Major League Fishing 2024 event. Yes, sir. Including the General Tire Team Series. I put the team on my back, baby. Watch free on My Outdoor TV with promo code MLF30. Have fun is number one. Catch big ends, that's a plus. I think it's going to go down. I'm really excited for this. We need that one big bite to give us a shot at winning. Try to put the right technique in front of their face so we can get them in the boat. Got some backup plans in mind, so we might get a little bit crazy today, take some risks. It's going to be a shootout. I mean, we saw the biggest bag yesterday in the same conditions. They should bite pretty well. I feel good about it, you know. We got some weather coming in, but I'm looking forward to getting out there and finding them again. Never have won one of these, but I'm going to try real hard to do some different things to try to catch bigger fish. The bike for me has only been just a certain segment, but at some point during the day, they've turned on, and I've caught a big sack in like 30 minutes. It's go time, boys. Today ain't the day to be just trying to catch a keeper. We're fishing for big ones. Ready to get this going. Let's see if we can put five big ones in the boat. Championship day, let's go. Here we go, we get to make a little boat ride, baby. Let's go get it done. Fishing's Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit presented by Fuel Me. Stop two in the 2022 Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. It is the Bass Boat Technology Stop Two Harris Chain presented by Frog Togs. Michael Neal from 31st place to second with 27 pounds, 11 ounces that he brought for Chris Jones to weigh in. Mark Rose coming from behind as well from 29th to 6th with a 20-pound bag yesterday. And our leader, what a huge win it could be for young Andrew Loeber. He topped everybody yesterday, but weights go back to zero today. Let's get out to the water. Here we are on Dead River, <clears throat> coming out of Harris, and uh, I don't hear the Dead River, just like the last uh, three days. Straight to Eustis, only a couple minute run after we get through the Dead River, and then uh, we're on the juice, hopefully they bite. Ready to do it. Let's check in with Mark Rose. For whatever reason, these fish on both of these spots don't really bite until the, it gets light. I can come right through when it's kind of dark like this, not catch them, and then when it gets light, catch a few. Been crazy, but we've had wind, and I'm hoping that that wind turns them on a little bit. There he is. Jeff Reynolds, 27 pounds, four ounces yesterday for him. He went from 44th place to third. Let's be honest, entering the day, he was just trying to win a little more money, cash a little bigger check. Now he finds himself in the top 10 with the opportunity of a lifetime to win this thing, Marty. Yeah, I completely agree there. I mean, but I, I said yesterday, top 50, anybody that hung a 20 pound bag, they were gonna fish on championship day. And that's exactly what Reynolds did. Figured out a little something too. That's the way to start it off. What did he figure out? Right there, oh top God, order that bite. That's awesome. That's how you start. Hey, baby, you want daddy to get you a kicker, there's number one. Four more of them. You do that four more times, you're in pretty good shape. <gasps> the Whopper Plopper. Mm-hmm. Oh, it might happen. That's a good sign. We welcome you in. Lines are already in on the Harris chain. And inside our Major League Fishing Studios, just getting the day started with JT Kenny and Marty Stone. I'm Chad McKee. We will get you out to the water here in just a moment. But it has a chance to be a historic day. Certainly could be for a young Andrew Loberg, Grant Galloway, maybe Christian Greco, one of these young anglers getting a huge national win kind of out of nowhere. But the guy we have to talk about is Michael Neal. He's turned into Jacob Wheeler all of a sudden, the way that he's dominating. He's got a chance to go back to back after he won stop one on Sam Rayburn Reservoir, Marty. I'm definitely agreeing with you. That youth movement is strong right now. We've got five of the top 10 that's got prior college experience 
and Michael Neal's not one of them, he's a young angler. If we go all the way back to Potomac 2021, that's where he took control of the AOI on the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. In the whole time, he was also in the running for the Bass Pro Tour AOI and coming in hot as a firecracker this year. This year alone, he's had five events, three times been in the top 10, and he's won one. And today, it's to be determined. If we go back to his last 11 events, nine of them been top 10s, we were celebrating Mike O'Neill bumping past the million dollar mark. He's already at 1.5 at this part of the season. He's fixing to blow past two million like he was standing still. Yeah, it's amazing the run that he's been on and we'll get into some of the numbers as we go through the broadcast and the chance to win today. The weather has just gotten better and better and better because it's gotten warmer. The fish bite has gotten better all week long. Yeah, it's one of the things that we've watched all week. You know, when this event started four days ago, it was 32 degrees, bright skies. Now it has warmed up considerably, and we've got overcast conditions. Spotty rain threw out yesterday. We're going to have the same thing today. So these conditions ever changing, you have to change with the bass. The big fish always matter in Florida. Championship day, no different. Marty, who will generate that seven pound plus bite and land it most importantly? We've seen the bite a few times. Not every time has the execution been there. When you look at this top 10 overall in the all three days that they had, each one of these angles, nine of the top 10 have generated a 20 pound bag sometime during this competition. Who's it gonna be? I don't know, but I guarantee you to be able to win this thing, there's gonna be a seven pound fish and now to get that bite's one thing, to land it on championship day with all the pressure is another. Andrew Loberg, the young California native, fished collegiately at Chico State. He says the Harris chain reminds him of Clear Lake back home. Perfect. He's our tackle warehouse clear leader. And before he launched, he spent a few moments with our Chris Jones. You won the first three days, but it's a four day deal. Weight zero out today. What's on the mind of Andrew Loberg? You know, I just I just still gotta go out there and catch them. You know, I got my few areas I'm gonna go to, and I know there's fish around. It's just changing the, to the conditions and making sure, you know, I can adapt and, and just fish clean. Fishing clean is huge, because yep. day two, I stumbled a little bit uh, with execution, but you know, I'm just gonna get out there, have fun, and uh, catch all I can catch. You know, it's, it's fun watching you, because it seems like you've been doing this your entire life, and I'm sure you have, but at this level, it's a new feeling, man. There's a lot of adrenaline that goes into this, and you handle yourself like a veteran. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's, it's been great. Uh, you know, growing up back in California, we got so many great anglers out there, and, and being able to compete against all those guys, and just having the versatility, and yep. being able to compete out here, yep. uh, it just makes a world of difference, and you know, I'm stoked. It's, it's a, definitely a new feeling, being day four, uh, on the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. Uh, weights are zeroed and you know, I'm having a blast. I, I'm, I'm on cloud nine. Thank you, Chris and Andrew Loberg. All right, we've got $100,000 on the line. We better set some mossy oak ground rules for this competition. We got down to the top 50 yesterday. We had four anglers who came from 29th or further back to make it into the top 10. Today, you're back at zero. It doesn't matter that you've caught 70 pounds this week. You've got zero to start the day, and it's simple. Highest weight for your five fish today, you are the winner of $100,000. And I mentioned a few anglers made big moves on day three. Let's look back at how all of our top 10 reached championship day. Jason Reyes is close. This guy's got a lot of water and good productive water. We might see some fireworks. I like to throw a slow moving Cinco and, and, and I'm pretty good about covering water real slow. So I think that was the key this week is I was able to fish a heavily pressured area and maybe just fish a little bit slower than some guys. Yes, I'll get rid of that little one. If you make the top 10, you're in first. We start from zero. So, you know, it comes down to a one day shootout. Jason Reyes, Texas Pro. Gray Buck has slid on in there. Best bag so far for Gray Buck. That was a fun day. Yeah, this day, it was a lot of fun. I, there hasn't been a day that I've had this much fun in a while in the tournament. I caught 14 pounds in probably a half hour. I caught one of my first casts. I was able to upgrade throughout the day. And when you get that weather in there, you can power fish a little bit more and generate some reaction strikes because of that. A 20 pound bag for Gray Buck on day three. 
Young Angler Parade, Christian Greco. This week it was mostly the shell bars that I had. I've, I've fished a lot of the shell bars in the past, but I mean, obviously you're fishing against the 150 something of the best guys out here on the water. So home lake advantage doesn't always mean anything. He's got a lot of experience on this water. I still like his chances. I don't know, I'm gonna have to think tonight because the bite was not there for me today. I struggled, I uh, just barely made the cut. So I may do some crazy things. We'll see, four more like that. And I think we'll be at championship Wednesday. This week, I really, like, I focused on the offshore deal. I sat and caught what I caught off one spot today, and same as the first day, you know, I caught 21 pounds in 30 minutes. Now he's moved up to shell bed points, caught this one on a jerk bait, but he told me yeah. one o'clock on was the magic time. Four more like that, we'll be doing all right. Normally, you know, I have to go out there and catch 30 pounds to even have a chance to win, but now everybody has a chance to win. I'm all for it, you know, I'm ready to get after it. Let's hear it for Corey Neese. This week, I found one little stretch. It's kind of a pocket, and it's got some really short hydrilla young grass that they haven't sprayed yet. Looked like he had a really good quality grade of fish. We saw him catch this one, what looked like to be on a drop shot. Kind of the way the wind's been blowing, it's rotating a little bit of a mud line right there, and it's been a good spot that's helping me get things started. I just got to figure out how to catch them bigger ones later on in the day. Mark Rose, former angler of the year on this pro circuit. John Goodwin as he tries to make his way to another 20 pound bag. I'm just fishing a grass bed. Got a nice mixture of eelgrass and hydrilla and I'm kind of finding them in the mornings where that hydrilla and the eelgrass meet. And also I've got another little shell bed I've got all to myself. I've had three seven pound bites off of it. Yeah, it seems to be a common theme with these guys fishing offshore in old school Carolina rig around the shell beds. Hopefully that one two punch, you know, the shell bed and the grass will work today. Let's hear it for Sean Goodwin. What a breakthrough this has been already for Grant Galloway. You know, I found some water I liked. It had the ingredients that I liked, and I've been able to make it work so far. He made that long run again to Lake Griffin, and so far, the jerk bait's been working best for him. This is the first cut and top 10 that I've made, and this is my second year on tour. But I just try to stay positive, and we finally got it going this derby, and it's gonna help me throughout the rest of the season with that positive momentum and that feeling of that I can compete. Wow, the kicker for Grant Galloway from the guy who's had the best day, and that would be Jeff Reynolds. Man, when you're in Florida on a lake like this, you know it's always possible, but it's not like you just sit around and think, I'm gonna go catch 27 pounds tomorrow. This was quite a little pickup at yeah, the end Reynolds of the day. Reynolds caught this fish, and we heard him say he caught some other giants on a whopper plopper. I said, man, if a guy could get the right conditions, you could do really good on a whopper plopper. And so finally I sat down and I tied it on and went to catch him. 27 pounds for Jeff Reynolds. 27 pounds, 11 ounces yesterday for Michael Neal. It was a good day. Uh, I mean, I knew the fish were in the area. I had some good bites there in practice. Yesterday, I, I figured out where they moved to, and today, I figured out, like, the exact cast. Michael Neal puts a charge into this weigh-in. It's Florida. Big bites can happen. Somebody could weigh 40 pounds. That's not out of question. Also, to have a bad day, and it just takes, like, 18 to win. So whoever wins will have one of those giant fish, that, an 8-10 pounder, probably, and that's what's going to push them over the edge. The former Chico State angler is absolutely showing out this week. Coming out here, obviously, is a very, very large task. And, you know, just having the confidence in yourself, and I'm just going to go to my water exactly how I've been fishing the last couple of days and really just milk what I got and, and just fish what's in front of me. 7-7 seven, seven right there. Fish are slowly starting to move up and, and starting to feed a little bit better. So I think weights are going to be big, and, you know, it'll be a shootout. It'll be a lot of fun. Andrew Loberg, 22-10 on day three. The Tampa native, Christian Greco. I'm gonna start off on this offshore deal right here, see if we can't get a few fish. First thing this morning, see if they're firing. If not, I think I'm gonna take the risk and run into Lake Apopka. If, uh, if the bite gets good down there, things can happen quick, so. Weight's being zero, I'm gonna take the risk, unless these fish start firing up first thing this morning for me. Sean Goodwin. There we go. Total purse could exceed over $890,000 when you throw in all the bonuses. Of course, the winner takes home at least $100,000 from the Harris chain this week. All right. Took me about two hours to get my first bite yesterday. Mark Rose caught 20 pounds, four ounces yesterday. He went from 29th place to sixth place. Those guys you were talking about, that you catch a 20 pound bag, you got a chance to go into the top 10. And 
That's exactly what Mark Rose did yesterday, Marty. I'm going to be curious to see if any of these guys can back up that 20-pound bag with another 20, because we haven't seen it yet, but the conditions are definitely favorable for it to happen. This stop two of six on the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. It is time for a Fuel Me flashback, and we go back to stop two of last year. Sweet Home, Alabama, Major League Fishing's Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit, stop two, Smith Lake. I'll take five of those to start Good with. times rolling for John Cox. That's a big one. That's the one we need. <laughs> wow. It's a two pounder. Talk about a stud. Oh my God. Seal the deal. Oh, we yeah. have no time left. It's over. <laughs> Look at that. Mm. Five pound fish, I'd be smiling too. Whoa! Gets it done on Championship Sunday. Your champion is John Cox. The Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit, presented by Fuel Me, is brought to you by Tackle Warehouse. Click, save, fish. Fuel Me. Fuel ordering simplified. Apu Garcia. Fish to win. Lorenz, America's number one fish finder. And by Berkeley, your fish, our science. This is Major League Fishing's Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit presented by Fuel Me. Championship Wednesday has arrived. It is the Bass Boat Technology Stop 2 Harris Chain presented by Frog Talks. The Harris Chain, this 10 Lake Chain to the northwest of the Orlando area in north central Florida. 10 anglers, 10 lakes, a thousand possibilities in Lake County, Florida. And to take us through, I mean, we've got two experts here to choose from. Marty Stone, past winner here, JT Kenny, runner up finish here on the Harris Chain. JT, why don't you take today's lake breakdown? What are we looking at? Well, like you said, Chad, there's 10 lakes in the chain. Really, eight of them are the big players, but there is 10 lakes in the chain. Recently, Lake Apopka, which has been a place that didn't get a lot of attention because of the, the water quality there. Water quality has really improved in Lake Apopka. However, in today's championship round, at least so far, none of our 10 anglers have made the trip down to Apopka yet. But the other lakes, Big and Little Harris, Griffin, Eustace, Dora, Carlton, they're all getting some attention as well as Buclair. There's a lot of hydrilla, eelgrass, and Kissimmee grass around the edges of these lakes. They also have canals, docks, bulrushes, lily pads, which played a factor in a lot of our anglers' creels this week. Also, a lot of shell bed fishing. Is, is, some of these fish are actually starting to get moved offshore back out into their offshore haunts since they finished spawning. This place is a really fun place to fish. Whatever style you like to fish, you can find it right here on the Harris Chain of Lakes. It looks like it, but no, we're not a little south of here on the Jungle Cruise in Adventureland. It's not Dwayne the Rock Johnson driving this boat, it's Gray Buck. The anglers often must slowly wind through canals and rivers between each lake here on the Harris Chain. We work our way over to Jason Reyes. Reyes was third going into the day yesterday and managed to just stay in the top 10. But now you're back at zero. Doesn't matter that you were 10th. Good thing about Ray is he had a lot of other guys in his area. Now he's got a whole place to himself. That's really going to open his water up. Not big. And this is start. Andrew Loeber, this has been his best part of the day each day so far, the early morning bite. I remember talking to him yesterday and he was walking through the weigh-in line and turned around and met Skeet Reese for the first time, someone who he looked up to for a lot of years. That's sideways, dude. Ain't a bad one. That one choked it. 
Corey Neese now. He's one of those who came from outside the top 10 in yesterday to qualify. Went from 15th place to 7th place with 17 pounds, 13 ounces yesterday. Not much, but it's a start. Solid start for Andrew Loberg. Two of them. Number one. Number one and number five are always the toughest. So we got that one in the boat. Oops. Great buck. We just got into Dora. We made it through the canal. We're going to go run over here only two, three miles and start fishing. Um, I'm going to bounce around to probably three, four spots throughout the day and just kind of rotate through and keep picking them off and hopefully we get a big bag by the end of it. It took us 30 minutes to get here this morning. Grant Galloway certainly on the hunt for big ones. Smell fish. Back in with Gray Buck. Spot number one. Let's see if we can make some magic happen. Went from 40th place to ninth place yesterday. The Green Lane, Pennsylvania native. He caught 20 pounds even on day number three to get here to this championship round. We work back over to Loberg. Loberg has got a great starting spot. A lot of fish feeding in this area. Oh yeah, it's a 14 incher. So Marty, where have most anglers chosen to fish today? They're all over this place. Big Harris, Eustace, Griffin, Dora's getting some love. 110. Little buddy. Little buddy, but it's good to get a couple in the box. Two in the box for Loberg. Mark Rose now. Oh. Oh. That fish came up and hit me right at the boat. If I saw that right, fish came off. Yep. Got the, that's, <laughs> and he got it. So the fish came off. In midair, I got him in the net, and I caught my rod after I got him in the net. Did I tell y'all play center field? Former Arkansas State center fielder. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> that's crazy. Crazy, I tell you. Phoenix replay time. We may have to watch this one several times. So he's got it until right there. No, he Off it, it comes. He kicked him out of the net right there. That never happens. That's the old deep scoop. That never works out. Marty and JT, Chad, I hope y'all like that. That's amazing. Some outfielder skills there. It's a reason we call him Petey Rose. And Mark Rose has two now this morning. We saw Corey Neese catch one just a couple of moments ago. And we get back over to Corey. Come off in the net. 
come off right at the net. Into the net. From our launch site in the town of Leesburg on Lake Harris, Corey has made his way over to Lake Eustace. Corey's in his fourth year on the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. His dad, Jim, joined him on the circuit last year. Let's meet Corey in this Polaris Angler Profile. My dad, my grandpa, you know, they fished their whole life. So ever since I was this tall, you know, I fished. But uh, they taught me everything I know. And still to this day, you know, I still fish with both of them. And my dad's actually fishing the pro circuit with me now, so that's cool. My favorite technique's definitely, you know, deep cranking or deep swim baiting or, you know, something like that. My least favorite technique is throwing a chatterbait. I can't stand to throw a chatterbait. Me and my dad go fun fishing all the time on the lake we live on. Um, it's full of smallmouth, so, you know, that's what I grew up catching with smallmouth. Championship round of the Bass Boat Technologies Stop 2 Harris Chain presented by Frog Togs. Ten anglers on the water in our championship round here on the Harris Chain, and they are snapping. Been wondering what young Christian Greco is up to. Hasn't caught a fish today, but I think he spent a lot of time running so far. Well, started off on that offshore shell. Just wasn't happening. Uh, looking at the weather conditions for today, we're going to have a lot of clouds, a lot of rain, uh, kind of the similar conditions as yesterday. And those fish never fired up for me. I can see them out there, but they just won't bite anything. So I made the decision we're going to go lock into a popka. Um, there's a lot of big fish down there. If that bite turns on, um, it can get good really quick. I can put some big fish in the boat down there. And it's, it's something I feel really comfortable doing, just putting that flipping stick in my hand, going down the bank. and. Uh, we shouldn't have much pressure down there. I'm pretty sure I'll probably be the only guy down there. So I should have plenty of water to myself. But uh, we'll just have to see, get down there, and uh, get to flipping, see if we uh, get some bites down there. And uh, if not, we might run back into Harris, fish the last couple of hours on the shell. But final day with the weights being zero, I think it's worth the risk. A little bit of a Hail Mary, maybe, or certainly looks a switch like. for him. First check with the man trying to go back to back with the wins on the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. He's the reigning angler of the year on the Pro Circuit, Michael Neal. Said he found these fish practice first day of the tournament. They just, they weren't set up right. And the second day of the tournament, about midway through the day, he realized they moved 150 yards. It's one of the smaller ones for sure. Since the Bass Pro Tour started in 2019, Michael Neal has fished 38 events when you combine the Bass Pro Tour and the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. 38 events. This is his 15th top 10 with two wins. Here's Gray Buck. He's been working a couple of different baits, some moving baits and some soft plastics along the outside edge of the Kissimmee grass in Lake Eustace. That's one of the premier patterns this time of year. Saw number one on that white Z-Man jackhammer in the razor shed. Good two pounder to get us started, kick us off. Get some water in for these fellows. There we go. <laughs> Gray Buck has one for an estimated two and a half pounds. We get back over to Michael Neal. Here's what's left of my finesse worm. But they'll get us started. He's on the smaller side than what I've caught. 27 pounds, 11 ounces yesterday for Michael Neal to get here to this championship round. That 27-11, the best bag that anybody has had all week long. He may need that again today to win a championship and go back to back. This guy has absolutely been amazing the last, what, 18 months, maybe, yeah. something like that. Back over to Gray Buck. We had a bite right before that. Um, it's a little, or there's no wind this morning. I had some wind in here yesterday, and I think that was helping those fish commit a little bit more to it. So that first one kind of just pushed the bait when he ate it. This guy, he, he sucked it in deep. We got that jackhammer down his throat, and this favorite rod, it's got, um, it's made of a, glass composite, so it actually loads up and lets those fish get the bait a little bit deeper normally. And I think that really helps keep them hooked up. Um, so we're going to see if we can keep working our way down here. 
I caught a couple more on this section yesterday. Hopefully we can get a big one to show up. Over to Mark Rose. Mark Rose has had six previous wins of this level, pro circuit level. Oh. Don't do that again. Please don't do that again. Good night. It's getting warmer, they're jumping. Got so many options. I think more than anything here on the Harris chain, right, JT? There is, I mean, you're talking about 10 different lakes, so many different kinds of cover, so many different combinations of cover in the different places. If he jumps by the boat, try to catch him again. It will confuse you to say the least. That's why I always keep it simple. I never left big hairs. <laughs> Thought he was a little bigger than that. That's three for Mark Rose now. Catching good quality, too. It's about a nice two and a half, anyway. Of course, Mark fishes both the Bass Pro Tour and the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. Let's learn some more about Mark Rose in this Polaris Angler Profile. I learned to fish, gosh, when I was just a little old bitty thing uh, in the boat with my dad, granddad, uncles. We're just a sportsman family. Favorite dinner of choice is probably barbecue, baked beans, and slaw. Maybe a little salad on the side, big piece of Texas toast, sweet tea. My girls, Natalie and Hannah Grace, uh, love them dearly, and uh, that's where my most joy lies. It's Major League Fishing's Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit, presented by Fuel Me. The championship round of Bass Boat Technologies Stop 2 Harris Chain, presented by Frog Talks. Out to Sean Goodwin. A little one. That's what I'm catching in the mornings. Later in the day, I get the, we'll get rid of them. About a pound. All right, number two. Greg Galloway was the leader after day one. He caught 23 pounds, nine ounces on the first day. Well, uh, Some bait moving right over there. Sean Goodwin's boat now. Every day there's been some bite window, you know, 30 minutes to an hour. Well, they really bit. That's a good one. He's fishing in the same basic area as our young guy Loberg is fishing. They've got quite a shad spawn, early season uh, shad spawn yeah, yeah. going on in that area where there's hydrilla and eelgrass both mixed together. He's throwing a larger series of a uh, shallow running crankbait, a square bill crankbait. Seems to be working real well for him so far today. Right. No, the bite's better today. But, yeah, he's a fat one, about two and a half. Hopefully, none of these we're catching this morning will make it home this afternoon. but I'm happy to have them right now. Oh, that's a fat one. These have all been, the big ones I'm catching are just super skinny. 
they just look terrible. They just really postponed, beat up really bad. But that one's a fat one. I'm gonna give y'all away an A for effort too this week. Jerking that jerk bait around for four days in a row will wear you out. He's a young man, he can handle it. I don't think I could handle it. I could not. That's about the best way to get them unhooked. <laughs> Just let them come out of the boat. Back over to Low Bird, hooked up again. Better fish right here. Now, this is going to be number four already for him. Yeah, that's a good one. Championship Wednesday, baby. Here we are. Let's go. He got off to a fast start yesterday. When I talked to him last night, it allowed him the freedom to be able to practice a little bit on the clock. This has been his primary area, but he feels like he found two or three additional areas that he can now add to his rotation. Four nine. So Andrew Loberg is our unofficial leader. They're snapping a little bit this morning as we get back over to Nice. That might be a better one. Talked to Corey after the first day of this competition. We had that 21 pound bag and he's fishing open water high drill, jerk bait, vibrating jig, worm as well. That 21 pound day though, the majority of his damage was done after that 12 o'clock time period. That's five. We gotta get rid of all of them if we wanna win this thing though. Great buck. Um, we're kind of giving up on the chatterbait bite that we had going in the mornings. I don't think there's enough wind right now, so we're gonna go and just start flipping. With this minimal wind, it's gonna help a lot. Um, I'll be able to make precise pitches. I'll be able to see holes in the grass where those fish should be bedding down, so it should work really well. Um, excited for this, and we're gonna go try and catch a couple big ones. Let's meet Gray Buck. My grandfather took me out. Uh, we would just go catch whatever we could, catfish, bass, it didn't matter. So I was in love with it since I've been two or three years old. My favorite fishery is the Thousand Islands. Giant smallmouth, that's who I go to. I won my first BFL there. The biggest bass I've ever caught in my life was a nine and a half, and it was on day one of Sam Rayburn uh, two years ago. You gotta go with my wife. She fished at Penn State with me. We had a lot of good times. We caught a lot of giant smallies on our trip up to the Thousand Islands. Launching from Leesburg, Florida this week, the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit anglers have enjoyed the atmosphere of Lake County, featuring a more relaxed, comfortable pace than at the bustling theme parks just to the south. Lake Country includes quaint lakeside towns such as Mount Dora, the shopping and restaurants are a big draw for tourists coming to the Central Florida area. Down in Claremont, a waterfront park brings families looking for a relaxing day. Along with bass boats, don't be surprised if you see a seaplane or two on the Harris Chain of Lakes. Combining natural beauty and welcoming hospitality, Lake County, Florida has been a gracious host. Jeff Reynolds now, he's got two in the boat. Yeah. Oh. I mean, he barely ate that thing, just sucking at it. I think he's kind of like me, he's missed a few meals. Don't we resemble each other? Especially when I suck in a lot. Thank you, Lord, I'll take them off. 
back over to Mark Rose. Yeah. I saw that fish bust. Threw the old thunder chicken in there and got him. Well, we got us a limit, 9.30. We got all day to. His overall just grade of fish is better than everybody else's right now. Do like George Jefferson. Moving on up. Oh my god. Here's Lowberg. Oh, dude, right at the boat. Oh, that was crazy. I was literally reeling it in, literally like five feet from the boat, reeling it in. I saw a white, I'm like, what? Boom, all in about one second. Greco. It's like some old school Florida fishing right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's one. <laughs> He's made a big move, ran all the way down to the southeast side of Lake Apopka. Talking about a move, though, I talked to fishing early in the week, and he did a lot of his damage in Big Harris and also in Eustace fishing shell beds, and then he would mix in some outside Kissimmee grass flipping and pitching, and he pulled the plug on that today. Pound and a quarter. I mean, he, he's given up an hour and a half of fishing time to get over there to a pop, paying off. Oh, that's a good sign. Loberg. JT, that's another solid fish. It is. That's going to be a good upgrade for Loberg. Let's go. Let's go. Unofficial leader. Back to Christian Greco. There we go. I think they're biting today. From the Tampa area. He told me the Hillsborough River. Never even heard of that, JT. Close to a three pounder. Was more of his home water, and then he felt like Kissimmee was next, then the Harris chain was third. Two and a half. They're biting in here. That's Here's Reyes, who's the last man into the top 10, but all you have to do is <laughs> get in and you have a chance to win. Weights reset to zero today. Yeah, Reyes has been working all week long there in Big Harris, an area known as Party oh, Cove. And it's a one-man party today because all the traffic now is off that particular area. He's got it to himself. Slow start, but I like the strategy. I like where he's at, and I like the fact he's got it all to himself today. Marty, I might be wrong, but that looks like that big-bladed chatterbait to me. Mm-hmm. That's four. Didn't Thrift help design that? That's his signature bait. I can't confirm that that's what it is, but it looks like that's that big blade. Let's check in now with Grant Galloway. Ah, he pulled off. That's Ouchtown. He's made a little longer move than some of the anglers have today. He's all the way up in the Ocklawaha River. It's the very northern end of Lake Griffin, which actually flows to the north, and then it kind of swings back east. Sometimes you can't do right, sometimes it can't go wrong. For Matt Lee to say he's one of the funniest persons he's ever been around, that's saying something. My daddy taught me fishing. Growing up, we had a bass boat. I think the first bass I ever caught was on a Carolina rig with him. My biggest bass in competition, I would say, is a 9-3 I caught on Ross Barnett in a BFL in Mississippi. But I mean, this week I've caught a 9-1, an 8-6, or maybe two 8-6s, I don't know, it's crazy. My daddy, hands down. Uh, you know, he's my best friend, and uh, you know, I rely on him more now than I ever have, and uh, any time me and him get to get on the water together, it's a great time. Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit presented by Fuel Me is brought to you by 
Phoenix, built by anglers for anglers. Favorite fishing, the future of fishing. Polaris, think outside. Lithium Pros, the one battery you need. And by Mercury, go boldly. Mark Rose has caught his limit. Well, we've got our bottom end fish. We've got, you know, we need, we need to get three big ones now. We got the rest of the day to catch three big ones. We've got our good filler fish. Three five pounders, we'll have a shot. Michael Neal trying to go back to back. He won stop one at Sam Rayburn Reservoir. Bigger than some of them I got, but I still don't need to weigh him in. Yeah, yesterday he got off to a little slow start too. He's been working a big bite, eight inch finesse worm on a Carolina rig on the outer edges of Lake Door, concentrating on the hard spots that's in front of the grass. Couple areas to be able to rotate through. Right now though, he just has not been able to make those big fish fire. They're biting in here. Things could get good. Christian Greco made a bold move to run all the way down to Another two and a half. A popka. Now that means his fishing day will be shorter than any other angler on the water. So he has less time. But he's starting to get some work done, fellas. He really is. Bold move. It's a decision that is paying off for Christian Greco now. Check back in with Mark Rose. You doing a locator call? You didn't hear that, Al? I was just talking to him. He just wanted to talk. See how our day was going. I told him the weather changed. I'm trying to make adjustments. Haven't really found the right one yet, but we're working on it. Andrew Loberg was the leader after three days. He's the leader on championship day so far. What do I have? Is it fish or is it grass? A little bit of both. <sighs> More fish and grass. That was so sick. That was the best thing in the world. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, I mean, it's skinny. It's probably only two and a half pounds, but man, that was crazy. It literally didn't even fight because there was some grass. That grass gets covered in their eyeballs and they just can't see. I'm glad uh, it fought like that because this week, they've just been all just, yeah, that's not even a, let's see here. One back-to-back -back West Division Toyota Series she events said, at the California Delta. Skinny. And Lake Havasu last year. He's come east for the Toyota Series Championship four times, and also three times for the College Fishing National Championship. So he has experience other than just out west, but man, if you could break through and win, in Florida this week. That was crazy. It just rockets your career so fast. I learned how to fish from my dad and uh, my grandfather and all my uncles when I was very, very young, at probably the age two or three years old. Fishing the Toyota Series last year on the Western region uh, and winning back-to-back -back tournaments was probably by far the best thing that, that's happened to me in the tournament scene. It was a very awesome experience. Put a one ounce or above weight in my hand in a lot of grass or something like that. I, I, that's, I love to punch. PB&J on, on my budget this year, being a rookie. 
Welcome back into our championship round of the Bass Boat Technologies Stop 2 Harris Chain, presented by Frog Talks. Bite has been good early on this championship Wednesday. Ten anglers out on the water, everybody trying to chase down $100,000 first prize on the Harris Chain. Let's check in on Jason Reyes. This whole event, he spent time looking at seven or eight boats. There's not a boat around him now. He's got this whole area to himself. Little guy. Spoke with him last night, said he was going to move around in there a lot. He's going to try to use up the whole area today. Reyes is certainly a Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit veteran. He's been out here since 2007. Well, he'll be the first to go. That's number five. Back over to Greco. That's a good one. Talking about a move, though, I talked to Christian earlier in the week, and he did a lot of his damage in Big Harris and go. also in Eustace, fishing shell beds, and then he would mix in That's some outside Kissimmee grass, flipping and pitching. That's and he pulled the plug there. on that today. I mean, he's he's given up an hour and a half of fishing time there. to get over there to a pop, paying off. Here we go. That's the kind that lives here. Four pounder. He said when he saw the schedule for the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit and that this stop was on the calendar, he was all in. Watching him fish, he reminds me of Jordan Lee. Things can happen in here. You know how Jordan, he'll, he'll make a gamble in a heartbeat. Now over to Galloway. The young guys are getting it done out here, and you're seeing the fruits of the high school and the college programs. Mississippi State Bulldog, former angler. Babies. Rayburn wasn't quite what he wanted, but how many times, JT, have we watched anglers like Galloway here get a good finish, and now it just sort of changes their whole mindset, and then one good finish leads to another, and the next thing you know, we blink, and they've had a great year. Chill, bro, chill. He's the number four, but he's a little. Yeah, I just love the guy's attitude. Like he, like, and just like right now, like obviously he's not doing as good as he'd like to be doing, and he's just owning it. <laughs> you know, he's just having fun with it. He's owning it. You know, instead of being, you know, all poo pooed out and everything, he's just like, yeah, whatever. You know, you and I could hang out in the boat and have a good time. Yeah, with you. just keep wading through. Oh my gosh, what do I have? Baby, this is the one. I don't need a net for this one, I need a harpoon. Wow. He's got my attention. Sean Goodwin has caught his limit, just trying to work his way to a bigger bag. Uh, he ain't near as big as I thought, but... It's a good one, but man, I, I thought this was a giant. 2007, All-American winner. Take it easy, baby. Take it easy, just come up here in the net. Golly, I thought that was a giant. <sighs> hey, we'll take him. Hey, don't ask, don't, I'm not complaining. Three and a half pounder. Yeah, this, this Oklahoma angler's getting it done using a hybrid hunter, baked by Strike King. Fish in a small area, it's probably 300 yards in length. Some good fish still in there. Boy, I just touched that one. Good call. So Sean Goodwin improves his bag. We welcome you inside our Major League Fishing studios alongside JT Kenny and Marty Stone. I'm Chad McKee. Is the big fish going to show up? That is the question because it's close. You could make a case for probably down the top five, just one big fish, and they're going to be there at the top of this leaderboard, Marty. 
Yeah, I think the big fish are going to show up. They've showed up all week long. This lake has fished really well. Probably the best I've seen it fished in a long time. But to me, this is sitting up like a typical Florida day. Not a lot of wind. There were some cloud covers early. There was a good morning bite, but the big fish were MIA during that morning bite. But in Florida, this time of the year, they will not go all day without biting. Watch for this southeast breeze to kick in. That east wind start getting that diamond on the water, like JT likes to call it, a push as far as these big fish go. Someone's going to get a chance at some of these seven pound plus fish. They're going to generate the bite. Then they've got to land it. I think big fish will determine the outcome of this whole event. The other thing that generally happens in Florida in the springtime, thunderstorms. You get the pop-up thunderstorms, they roll through and you're all good after that. Tell us when they will arrive today. Do you expect, is there going to be electricity and, and how might they impact this championship day? Chad, as far as the electricity goes, I'm not real sure about that. It's not really forecast, but what is forecast, some pretty heavy thunderstorms are scheduled to come through. Some of these guys that are out there, like Loberg, you know, Reyes, a, a lot of our guys that are out there over top of those big expansive hydrilla and mixture of eelgrass beds, that could, I mean, absolutely activate those places and get those big fish chewing and watch these, watch the leaderboard go from 15 or 16 pounds leading to maybe 26 or 27 pounds leading like it did yesterday. Reco? Yep, just uh, flipping these reeds, getting plenty of bites. Uh, last few bites I've had haven't helped any. Been about a pound and a half, two pound fish. So just looking for that big bite right now. We've got a decent limit in the boat, but we're gonna need one or two big bites to make this thing happen. I think I should be able to get it done. Uh, with as many fish that are up here, there's gotta be some big ones around. Just gotta put it in the right little clump and uh, put her in the boat. So just keep flipping along here. We've got about two more hours to go before I gotta start heading back towards Harris. So these next two hours are gonna be crucial for me. Here's Sean Goodwin. There we go. God, got him kind of hard lined here. Goodwin and Loberg have been sharing some water and Loberg's moved off of it. And, and when I say sharing, they're, they're 300 yards apart. They're just oh. in a general area. Okay. A few more ounces. This is his rookie season out here on Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. So he's been fishing BFLs for 24 years in the Okie division. All right. 16-time regional on, qualifier. We need big one. That's pretty impressive stats. It really is. When eight you... eight BFL wins. I mean, that's fishing against so the, gotta... you know, the the local sticks around those lakes. Those people don't realize that those BFLs are. That's a hard tournament to win. To have eight of those, that's a serious accolade. Yeah. Two eight. Rayburn, 126 place finish. Probably wasn't what he was looking for, but didn't come back and follow it up with a good event here. I think he just come off. He did. 27 pound day to go from 44th to third place yesterday for Jeff Reynolds. Man, they're just not, I don't know. Well, they're just not getting it good or. Here is Jeff's Polaris angler profile. Yeah. I was young. I was probably four or five years old. My dad taught me. He grew up fishing, and uh, he taught me how to fish. That's where I started. I guess my favorite fishery is probably Lake Texoma. It's the lake I live on. You know, not a great lake for huge fish, but I've won a lot of money there and had a lot of fun. Biggest bass was in California. It weighed 12 pounds and 11 ounces, and it was in a tournament. Favorite technique is Anything moving fast. Whopper plopper like I was throwing today, spinner bait, something covering the water. It's Major League Fishing's Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit presented by Fuel Me, Bass Boat Technology, Stop 2, Harris Chain presented by Frog Talks. Beautiful look in from the favorite fishing drone cam. Cloud cover rolling by, no rain today. It's beautiful as a matter of fact. Grant Galloway, 
You know, this week for Grant Galloway, important for many reasons. You get a top 10, but most importantly, he's proven to himself that he can compete out here because he, he admitted he had some doubts. Yeah. Hello. How did that not hook me? I don't know. They're all males. But as he told me, I'm sure he did you. This is part of what he did to catch those big ones, catch a bunch of those, and the next thing you know, the next one's an eight-pounder. Over to Mark Rose. Got off to a great start. It slowed a little bit, though, for Mark here. Mark Rose started the season with $2.995 million in career earnings. Now joined the $3 million club this season. Right when I said it feels good right there. We catch one. We're going to leave here, and Michael Neal's going to have a pretty commanding control over the AOI race. Rose had a 54th place finish, I believe, at Rayburn, and now falling up with a top 10. But the reason I say that with these two anglers, we're going to TVA Reservoirs for our next two, Pickwick and Gunnersville. And both of these two anglers have had a lot of success on TVA bodies of water. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. What a big is that, though? We ain't giving up yet. But dadgummit, we ain't making no progress. I'm thinking about dragging something out there. Oh, there's nothing come up to the top and got it. His top tens come out of nowhere for Grant Galloway. This is his second season cool, on the Tackle right? Warehouse Pro Circuit as he's hooked up again. I think. He had three fish so far this tournament over eight pounds, two the first day and one yesterday. He hadn't had a finish better than 100th on the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. He said, felt like he was just fishing on a different lake from everybody else in his previous events. But his first top 10 coming here, and a long way to go today. And calls. I think Grant's probably got about the most wind on his water as any of the guys right now. Look out, we're almost eight and a half. That certainly helps these fish down here in Florida. Once you get post-spawn, yeah. it makes a big difference. <laughs> Dealer's choice. Great buck. Buck's another one of those in, in this field that's definitely got some college background roots, Penn State grad, fished on that team. All right, well, we got number three. You can see here, we got that Ayabusa hook in there. It's that 5 8 angler tungsten and just keep flipping away. I actually saw that one swirl on it, pitch back in there, I missed it, and then he came back this time. So it was obviously on a bed. We're gonna flip in there a couple more times, see if we can't get that female. Slowly working our way up. Get our TH Cole Marine in there. And good to go. Yeah, it makes me feel a little bit better here. It's been a while since I had a bite. Um, I'm hoping this is gonna be one of those little strips that you go through where you can get two or three fast. It seems like when you get one that's bedding down like that, they like that area. The bottom must be right. Um, and it gets us a couple fish right there. So that's good. Um, Hoping there's a big female sitting there that was paired up with him and see if we can get going in the right direction. Here's Reyes. You know, in the back of every one of these guys' mind, yesterday they kind of blasted them. I mean, two bags over 27, five over 20. They're all thinking it's going to take another 27 pound bag. And I, I bet none of them realize how close they are, especially the top five guys right now. I mean, they're just, they're bite away from winning this thing. Looks like a good one. Yep. That'll work. Marty looks like his bite's pick. They're not huge, but they're decent fish. Looks like his bite's picking up a little bit. I agree with that. That's a good one. Yeah. Gotta get rid of one, maybe. We move back over to Christian Greco. In 2018, he won the points in the Gator division in the BFLs. Doesn't help. 
So the kid was 19 years old, and when you win a points out of a, a region like the game, you fished against the best fishermen in Florida. Get one of those big ones to bite. <laughs> There's some hammers, I mean straight up hammers that fish that gator division. Back to Reyes. Getting to that point in the day when you don't really start to think any of these really giant bags like we saw yesterday are gonna come to fruition. But it's to that point where there's gonna be one hook set, one snap of that rod is gonna change the whole day. Mm -hmm. And possibly someone's life. That was dramatic. Well, that's what I was going for, Chad. All right, getting better, getting better. Let's meet veteran angler, Jason Reyes. I started fishing at the, about the age of 12. I had a friend, a friend that introduced me to a fishing tournament once, and from that point forward, I was hooked. Favorite fishery, probably Smith Lake, Alabama. I've had good success there. I, I like fishing finesse-type fishing. The biggest fish that I've ever caught in competition has been a 10-pound, 11-ounce at Sam Ray. Probably Michael Neal right now. That guy is killing it. I mean, he, he's, he can catch them any way, anywhere. The Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit presented by Fuel Me is brought to you by Tackle Warehouse. Click, save, fish. Lawrence, America's number one fish finder. Power Pole. Total Boat Control. Lucas Oil. It works. And by Power Stop Brakes. Brake upgrades made easy. Here's Loberg. Over to Michael Neal. This thing's lining up where Michael Neal could go back to back AOI out here. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, this morning, I mean, I would have liked to have known if they were biting. I mean, I, when I first pulled up, I caught like three or caught two and lost one within the first just few minutes. But since then, it's kind of gone away. It would have been nice then to know if they were biting for everybody or. Not, but I mean, it kind of influences your decision on how long to stay and when to go. Not necessarily to go try and find anybody else, but just move areas and try and come across something else or go somewhere else where you know some fish are. I mean, I've had, I can pick up a jerk bait and go down the middle of this lake and get bites, but they're just, they're not even keepers, most of them, so. Just, uh, it's the only place I know that has big fish in it, and just gotta stick with it. Back to Loberg. Just like that. Starting to cool. A little bit of an upgrade. They gotta get a lot bigger though, if we want a chance. Look for him to have a big year. I'm I said it the other day, and, and it might not be this next year, but within the next two to three years, we will see him full time on the Bass Pro Tour. There is not a doubt in my mind about that. I should stop fishing these buggy whips, but they look so good. I'm gonna even where Buck's at. He's only one solid bite away from really getting in this thing. One today, but. I caught that big one the other day out of a woman. Usually, when they spawn, like they go to that. Like they like that because that's all sand when you get those buggy whips growing. There we go. Oh. All right, and just like that, we were talking about how I couldn't catch a male buggy whip, so we got one. <laughs> um, I'm gonna power pull down here real quick. This is number five. The solid. Two something. He's not real fat, but 
fills out the limit. Makes me feel good about it. Look at that, he's got a leech in his mouth there too. <laughs> um, but that's good. This afternoon bite seems to be picking up a little bit. Hopefully we can keep it going. I'm definitely going back to that one stretch that I fished it twice today. I think I've caught one off of it. I missed one or two. But it really seems like that afternoon deal is going to hopefully play out again. And we're going to go get a big one. And we can upgrade with one or two of those fish. It's really going to help move us up here. Maybe give us a little better shot. Reynolds now. Reynolds showed us the potential of what this thing could do yesterday. Don't get in the grass. Yeah, I'm gonna go back. To just, I wonder how many of these guys realize that they're I'm, they're a bite away. But yesterday there was two bags over 27, five bags over 20 pounds. And a lot of these guys are thinking if they've got 25 pounds, someone's got 25 pounds, they're fishing for second or third or fourth place. When in reality, there is a... It's tight. It's tight like tiger. Catching the little ones, losing the big ones. That's all right. That's number four. Even get down to Jeff Reynolds, catch an eight pounder. And we've seen fish over eight pounds every day. See that one in there? We need more like that one. It ain't over. It might be that we'll have 10 guys headed back in thinking they did not win and somebody will win. Here's Greco. That's a better one. There we go. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's the one we needed. Yeah. He is at an estimated 18 pounds now and has a two pound unofficial lead on Sean Goodwin. That's the first angler we've heard actually say, yep, that's the one I needed and kind of feel like he has a chance to win this thing. Six, seven pounder right there. That's what we've been flipping for all day. Six and a quarter. That's the one we've been flipping for all day right there. How about that core right there? Six and a half for a two and a half. That's the kind you need right there. That was the one we've been looking for. One more and things could get interesting. He's got the clock ticking. It's a little shorter for Christian Greco because he has to lock back through. I first learned how to fish when I was pretty young, just fishing off of the beach. My family used to go to the beach uh, every summer. It tears between Okeechobee and Kissimmee. Uh, I've done really well on both those lakes, and Harris is coming in a close third now after this. The biggest bass I ever caught in competition was actually last year in the Toyota series out here on the Harris chain. It was nine pounds, 12 ounces. Got to go with my guy, Brian Latimer. We're rooming this year. Uh, we fish every now and then, but we always have a great time when we get out on the water. It's the Bass Boat Technology Stop 2 Harris Chain, presented by Frog Talks. Anglers are in the final few moments of this championship day. Over to Corey Nice now. First day when he had that 21 pound bag, he didn't have a fish until 11 o'clock and did all his damage just all week long. It's been about the afternoon. There we go. It's another three and three quarter. Work our way over to Loberg. 
Oh my gosh! Dude! Uh, how did that? Come on! Just not meant to be, I guess. Corey Nice. They would start biting with 20 minutes to go. That's I'm telling you, man. That's how it's been every day. If everybody was doing it, 5:30, it'd be a whole different ball game. Mark Rose. Well, we did our best today. Let's go weigh him in. Now, Michael Neal. Definitely a good week overall. I mean, certainly didn't have the day I wanted today, but I mean, I, I, anytime you can make a top 10 against this group of guys is you've really done something. So, I mean, 160 something votes to start the week, and me down in the top 10 to end it. That's a good way to end the tournament and good way to start the year off of two, two top 10s back to back. Sean Goodwin now. Can't complain, I've had a good tournament. I've had some chances, some, I've caught some more, some fish bigger than I've caught in years the last few days. I've had chances to have uh, multiple 20 plus pound bags. And uh, so it's, it's been a, it's been a great ride. So love it. This is my rookie year out here on the bass, on the, uh, on the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. And to get a top 10 in the second one, I'm pretty pleased with that. But it's still a disappointment. You're out here, top 10. This is a heck of a chance to win 100,000 bucks. And uh, we didn't do that today, but we gave it a ride. Great buck. I sucked at my game plan that I went through that uh, chatterbait early in the morning, tried to get um, capitalize on that shad spawn. I caught a solid, probably two and a half pounder doing that. And then I just went and locked that flipping rod in my hand and just kept pitching and pitching and pitching. And I got a fair amount of bites. I probably had, I would think around 15 bites. I probably caught 10 of them. It was just, they weren't the right ones today. So it goes that way. It's fishing. It's all part of it, but I'm glad to be fishing day four and I'm ready to move on to Pickwick and go catch them there next time. Andrew Loberg. Well, it's been a great week out here. Uh, we're about wrapped up. Uh, Check-in's right there. So we got to roll in here pretty soon. Um, you know, I mean, super, super happy with how I fished this week. You know, wish I would have uh, capitalized today on a couple bites, but you know what? That's fishing, and I honestly can't complain because I had such an awesome week out here uh, on beautiful Harris. And, you know, can't wait to come back because uh, this place definitely is uh, top rated in one of my books. Christian Greco making a move like that. It's, just, it's big time gutsy and it, it's paying off, and I like it. Well, we gave it all we got today. We got a pretty good bag, but don't think it's going to be enough. Head back to weigh in and see how we stack up. We welcome you inside our Major League Fishing Studios for the final time this week. Marty Stone, JT Kenny, and Chad McKee with you. What will we take away from the Harris chain this week? What will be the biggest thing you take out of it, JT? To me, Chad, the biggest thing is going to be the resurgence if he hangs on, if Greco hangs on, the resurgence of Lake Apopka. This this lake five, eight, ten years ago was, I'm not going to sugarcoat it because you guys know I never do. This lake was a cesspool. It really was. It was nasty. There was all kinds of, of runoff from the local uh, fields and farms and then the housing developments, and it was just terrible. And the state has really turned it around to the point oh, where boy. there's a pretty good chance today that a national tournament is going to be won out of there. That's a testament to the Florida Wildlife Commission, the state of Florida, and what they're doing and trying to clean up our waterways. And they have done it with Lake Apopka. This place is back in action. The young guns continue to get it done, Marty. Another 
national winner potentially that is in his 20s winning on the big stage like Bradley Roy and Alton Jones Jr., Dustin Connell. Michael Neal is still young. It's all the young guys so far. It really is. We talk time and time again about the high school programs and the college programs, but it takes a little while to see the fruits of those labors, and we've seen it here. I remember day one, at the end of that day, we had five of the top ten that were former college anglers the youth movement is real. The feeder programs work. And then you look like a guy like Sean Goodwin. He's a rookie out here, but the resume, it was built on the BFLs. How these guys got here to the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit, it's showing that they're coming here no matter what route they take, and they're ready to compete on a national level. Here's another look at our unofficial leaderboard before we come back with Chris Jones and the weigh-in on stage to make it official. It looks like Floridian Christian Greco has enough to capture a victory in his rookie season. But remember, these are just estimates. If not Greco, it may be California rookie Andrew Loeber. So an interesting duel between a pair of rookies from opposite coasts is coming up on the weigh-in stage. We saw seaplanes earlier, now cars on the water. What do they say about Florida drivers? We're at the Bass Boat Technology Stop 2 Harris Chain, presented by Frog Togs, here on the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. On day one, Floridian Randall Tharp earned $1,000 in bonus money from Berkeley, thanks to this nine pound, seven ounce kicker. Tharp finished the event in 61st place. For the biggest bass of day two, Justin Lucas raised the ante a bit with a nine pound, 13 ounce bass. He ended up 13th overall at stop two. Now to the weigh in with Chris Jones. Word on the street is the Harris chain is the place to be. Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit is the thing to see. We're gonna crown a champion, let's go. Our next pro is from Moore, Oklahoma. He's had success at every level with every circuit. Let's hear it for Sean Goodwin. You have four and five together. Wow! A five best limit. 16 pounds even, new leader. Definitely a tougher day for I mean, I caught more fish today than I have been. I just didn't get the size of every single day I've had a flurry. Yep. 30 minutes or so where some big ones showed up and it never did. So I never got those big ones today. Pleased with that, I didn't lose any fish that hurt me. So it worked out real well. Here's your new leader, Sean Goodwin. Our next pro to weigh in in his second event on the pro circuit. Let's hear it for Andrew Loberg. Here we go, man, it's a deep throw. Sean Goodwin, you need 16 pounds even. Five worth, 16 pounds, 13 ounces. He got the lead with one pro left. Love Florida, absolutely love it. I haven't been home since January 1st. I left and uh, just sleeping out of the back of my truck, just going bassing, so. <laughs> <laughs> we honestly cannot wait for the next couple. Uh, being at Gunnersville and Pickwick, I've actually been to those places, so hopefully I could do have a decent show. Here's your new leader, the California kid, Andrew Lober, with one guy left from Tampa, Florida. Let's hear it for Christian Greco. You need for the win. 16 pounds, 14 ounces. Wow! A five-pass limit for Christian Greco. 18 pounds, five ounces. Your champion is Christian Greco. Man, when I went to a pop guy, I knew that there were some big fish down there and that it could go down down there. I thought I needed two or three of those big bites, but in about the last 10 minutes that I had out there, I flipped up that six pounder. It was just a great day out there today. He is your champion, Christian Greco. So Christian Greco wins the duel of rookies at the top. A disappointing championship day for Michael Neal, but with a win and a top 10 finish, Neal easily leads the angler of the year race with two regular season stops down. Andrew Loberg finished about a pound and a half back for his runner up finish, but was still pleased. I'm out here catching bass on a Tuesday in a bass tournament. Oh my God. Growing up in Northern California, there was so much versatility between grass and dirty water all the way to 
60 to 80 feet in clear water uh, with spotted bass. And we have all three species. So being a bass addict and just loving it and uh, honing the craft, you know, I try to perfect everything and uh, I'm glad it worked out this week. Two, two. There we go. Hey, that ain't a bad way to start the day. It's such a very, very healthy, just a giant ecosystem out here. Very tropical, and it's honestly looking forward to come back. I, was, I really want to come back in the next few weeks just to come down and fish again. It's, it's just awesome. That is, I just lost like three ounces. <laughs> that is crazy. It's very awesome to have two rookies go up on stage to see whoever would win the tournament, and uh, one being from the other side of the country <laughs> is a really cool ride up. Uh, but it was it was a really awesome day. That's for my parents right there and all my boys back at home, baby. The Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit presented by Fuel Me is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. Mercury, go boldly. Covercraft. Protecting the things that move you. General Tire delivers. And by Wiley X. Go confidently. Mercury moment comes courtesy of Mark Rhodes. It's almost two moments, saving the bass and saving his rod. Right there, the bait come undone, and Petey Rose showed some hops and some old baseball skills. Former Arkansas State center fielder, he caught two bass and rod and reel. So the fish came off. In midair, I got him in the net, and I caught my rod after I got him in the net. Our Mercury moment from Mark Rose today. Did I tell you I'll play center field? Let's take another look at our final results. JT said earlier in the show that this tournament might change an angler's life. I kidded him about being a little over dramatic, but in fact, Christian Greco's life was indeed changed by this victory. A 23-year-old rookie winning on a national stage. It's about as big as it gets. I fished Harris Chain quite a bit, fishing junior tournaments, high school tournaments, and then moving up to the BFL level and Toyota Series as well. I've had quite a bit of tournament experience out here on Harris. I look at every tournament just as a new opportunity, whether it's at the top level here on the pro circuit or whether it's a Tuesday nighter back home. I just go out there and, and try to catch the biggest bass that I can, just try to figure them out. It's all fishing, just trying to have a good time on the water, have fun out there, and if we can win the tournament and win a few extra dollars, then that's all a bonus for me. You know, I started the YouTube channel about two years ago when I really got serious in the tournament fishing and competing and, and trying to move up to that next level. I saw it as a great way to market myself, market myself to sponsors. Marketing is huge as an angler. You know, we rely on sponsor relations to, to really keep this industry going. And to be able to market myself through my YouTube videos is, has been a real blessing. It was a little bit odd this week. We were kind of in a weird transition, I feel like, between pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn. All the experience I have on Apopka is around the spawning time, and uh, those fish were spawning big time. It was nothing to go out there and catch a 20 plus pound bag. If it was gonna happen, it could happen quick down there, and I knew that that was gonna be my one shot to do it, especially with my shell bar bite going away. Right there. You know, I was pretty happy with my decision to go down there and how it all turned out. I thought I was gonna fall a little bit short, having only 18 pounds. I thought I needed one more good bite coming down, so I figured I would stop off on a shell bar on Harris if I had a few more minutes left in the day maybe pull out one last minute big fish. Turns out that we didn't need it, that we had enough with the 18 pounds. I was more surprised than anybody that pulled it out, but couldn't be more excited about it. It all happened so fast, qualifying for the tour, and then actually making that decision to come out here and, and fish it. And then here we are, stop number two, and holding that trophy up. It's just, everything's happened so quick, but it, it's been awesome. The Bass Boat Technology Stop 2 Harris Chain, presented by Frog Talks. First time big national winner. Thanks to Marty Stone and JT Kenny. I'm Chad McKee. This concludes our broadcast day.